Hey, it's Becky from Patchwork Posse. Today, we are going to take all your little batting scraps and we are gonna put them together with a fusible scrap tape that allows you to build larger pieces using smaller pieces of your batting. If you have any leftover strips off the edge while you're cutting your batting for your larger quilts, you are going to be able to start using those in other projects, bags, and even quilts. All right, if you are like me and you are cutting larger pieces of, you're cutting your batting for your quilts, you are left with strips of different sizes, shapes, whatever, and or just like larger chunks, and you really don't know they just kind of sit in the corner and you're really not sure what to do with them or how to use them. They're never big enough for the project that you have. And now you just have all of these little pieces. So today we are going to put together these little pieces so you can use them again. I have my two strips. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill both sides of your batting and you are going to place same sides up. So if it's the rough side, put this on the top. If it's the smooth side, put this on the top. Just make sure that they are the same sides. And then the other thing you're going to do is want to have a straight edge to start with. So if you need to trim these with your rotary cutter, go right ahead because we do want them to be straight. So when we butt them up against each other, they are going to match. So I'm just going to place my batting on top and then I am going to just trim this one edge and I'm going to repeat that for my other piece. Now, if you are zigzagging your batting together, you don't it's it's okay if they don't match, but for this, it's a lot easier if they do. Now that we have our pieces straight, what we're going to do, again, is place right sides facing up, whatever those right sides are, and you are going to get heat and bond. This is the easy seam tape. This is one and a half inches, and it is fusible. So I've got a pin here to keep it rolled. What you're going to do is remove this from the packaging and use this. Now, if you fill this, there is one side that is really smooth and then the other side is rough. The, uh, the side that's rough has the glue that fuses to your batting. And if you don't wanna do the full length, if it's really long, you can cut this into pieces so it doesn't roll off your table and give you problems, um, or it doesn't fuse where you don't want it to fuse. So I'm just gonna trim this. And the next thing you're going to do is iron it. Now, you do need to make sure that you cover this prior to ironing because this will melt directly onto your iron. So I have like an applique pressing sheet. This works really well. So I am just going to place this right on top and you'll just follow the instructions on um, the back of the package. So you lay it down, you make sure your glue part is down first, you join your pieces, and then you put um, a cover on it. So it can be cotton or um, something like this. With your iron, you are just going to place your iron directly on top of it, hold it down for 10 seconds and remove. And then you are just going to repeat that in as you continue down. Now, if you need to reseal it, just go back over and hold it down. This is a pressing motion, not an ironing. So you just need to press it down. You'll want this to cool for around five seconds or so before you move it. Got some extra batting bits. But as you can see now, when I pull on this batting just a little bit, you can see that it is fused together. 
So if you find that there's a spot that is pulling up a little bit or you're right here at this joint, um, you are just going to continue placing your batting together, putting glue side down, and then you can cut it to the correct length. And if you want, you can overlap this just a little bit. I'm going to use our pressing sheet again. We are going to hold this down and press for 15 seconds. Again, when you move it, just lift straight up. You just don't want to shift this um, pressing tape. So sometimes if you move the iron, it will um, move the pressing tape. It will shift the tape and get it out of line and then you'll have you'll have your batting glued to your ironing board. So you just don't want that to happen either. So you can kind of run your finger along this joint and if it's giving you issues, just place your sheet back down and then give it a good press again. Let this cool for just a little bit. And now you have a larger piece of batting and you can cut this to size. This is what the side with the easy seam tape looks like. It's just really super thin mesh right on top of the batting. And this is what the batting looks like on the other side. So as you can see, I've got a little gap, but I'm not too worried about it. So I can use this for quilting. Um, for projects or anything else and if I give it a little tug it just stays together really nicely. That is a quick simple process of using your easy seam tape by Heat and Bond and this is the one and a half inch and it is 15 yards so it will do quite a bit of these joints.